to today's action. In the World Team League, it's the final day of the playoffs. This is the top three already in the bottom right corner from Kaiser Gaming. Boy, are they on a streak from the first round of the playoffs all the way to here. Let's see if they can keep it going as we have got Raynor representing them in the bottom right corner of Neo Humanity to start us off. He's going to have to be on his toes because in the top left, a player who will bring out anything, everything, and builds you've never seen before, Max Pax, comes out to try and take down Raynor early and put Storm into what would be an incredible start, obviously, if they were able to get going with that. That really would be amazing. Hatchery goes down, out on the third base location, because obviously Max Pax doesn't want Reynold to take the natural easily. He gets himself in position there to kind of just deny that from the very get-go, and just going to be able to play out from there to start us out, so that's going to be our starting point. As our uh, Hatch Gas and Pool all going to be coming up as well, so just getting all of that underway, getting all of this started, and just going to be seeing... A pretty regular opening then, I think, for the most part here. It's pretty fair to say. Nothing overly crazy. Starting this off nice and peaceful. I'm, I'm kind of down for that, you know. I'm kind of okay if these guys want to play a bit of a peaceful game or so. That's all right with me. Nice peaceful game. Get into something interesting with Max Packs. Obviously, I mean, we're only two minutes in. At this point, it's very rally going to be super exciting or exhilarating or anything, but, you know, there's there's always a chance. You know, Raynor is a sneaky play. He does sometimes do things a little bit crazier, right? He is not a, you know, he's not been afraid in the past to proxy hatch and all these other kind of things, so you know, you can't just assume Raynor's going to come out and play this normal macro style every time, because that's not how Raynor plays. That's just not his approach to the game uh, in this matchup. So and obviously, Max Max is, like I say, always very creative and can be a very aggressive player too, so there really is just... No guarantee in that regard, I would say. Well, there is a Twilight Council opening from Max Pax. That part is obviously not really uh, surprising to anybody. We really obviously expected this just to be a uh, Twilight... That's the absolute usual go-to, so, so far so good in that regard. I'm just going to see our first adept not really getting much done either. Going to get turned back away. It's going to threaten a shade going by, but I'm not sure how much we can really do there. In all honesty, I feel like that's just going to be something that does get pushed back. For the moment. Now, here's going to be Glaives. One of the big questions we'll always have with these Glaive openers is just exactly what kind of Glaives is it. You know, do we get the Robo? Do we go six gateways and really apply the pressure? You already see four gateways in production, so we are up in the ante here right away. Max Pack's going to go for the six gates. We're going to kill off these rocks in the center as Raynor. That's going to allow him to slow down the initial progress of Adepts across the map. It buys him more time. Rotoran is nice and early here as well. I don't think he's going to do anything funky with these rocks either. I think he is just going to kill them off and stop any Adept shades from coming to the other side nice and quickly. So Raynor really prioritizing this. He did this yesterday too against Solar. We saw that a couple times. Uh, him just really again taking priority in time. You know, cleaning this stuff up and guaranteeing him just an easier time at potentially defending these situations. Stream lags out momentarily just to give Wardy a mini heart, heart attack. Always a good thing, right? Just to keep us on our toes at the start of the day. Wouldn't want us to just have a nice easy start and not have to worry about anything, would we? No. Of course not. That'd be way too, uh... That'd be w way too wild. God, that'd be, al that'd be almost weird, wouldn't it? Here are these adepts, like I say, they'll have to go the long way around now, so the brush distance is increased pretty heavily because of it, so that's uh, a big plus here for Raynor. Like I say, he played that correctly. He's going to have a good chance to get roaches out in time as well, and I mean, he, he was just fast on the roach run, I think that has, has to be said. He really does prioritize the important things here, as now we've got Lings trying to break through a stalker. Force and warpings at home is obviously painful as well. That's the last thing you want to be doing as Max Packs. 
Because that feels like such a waste at this kind of point in time. Because these adepts are going to try and shade by and... Well, unfortunately, will not do too much straight away. Purchase queens continuing through and just making a little play here. Just going to be seeing the adepts trying to get around no drones on this location. Reno actually has the uh, forward base as well here, by the way, so... Again, he's been taking this forward base a lot to power up his pushes later in the game, and it's kind of, usually it kind of feels like this makes it awkward for the Zerg to kind of defend, but actually it almost feels like Max Max is a little bit awkward on his adept movement. Reynolds doing a great job of this. He's really minimizing the worker losses so far, and he's making sure that this is just not going to be an issue for him. So Reynolds putting himself in what I'd say is a pretty solid spot up until now. Really, again, just playing this nicely, solidly. Yeah, just the game up until this point. And uh, goes pushing the prism back for a few more moments as well. It's just going to get that shoved away. And there's other probe just sitting out the front for now as well. Prison tries to get into the main base to try and find some further damage here, but not exactly looking super great still early on for Max Max. He tries to come in with the Adepts again. This time he will get some drones, but as he's getting drones here, Reno is picking off the Adepts, and that's obviously going to open up the possibility of a potential counter-attack, right? So that's definitely now going to be a bit more on the board for Reno than it was previously, so that's obviously a nice little positive as well. But he did lose some drones, but it's also at a stage where the drones have been rebuilt a little bit or two. You know, you've got to consider every time you're losing drones, when are you losing these drones? These were not drones lost at five minutes to the first round of Adepts. These are drones lost at, you know, seven minutes after you've droned up a lot more. You know, every drone that dies at that point is much less meaningful than the drones that would have died earlier in the game. So, you know, that actually does make a, a big difference here, and it's why we can kind of shrug this off a little bit more than you usually might expect. You know, eight drones is obviously not nothing. It's just so much more manageable for Reynold right now than what it usually might be, so... Yeah, it just really kind of comes down to the timing there. Let's see if your dips go moving around as well, see if they can perhaps... get a little grab on anything. Let's continue to... A move on now. We do have disruptors that are going to be able to get a first shot off onto some queens, which is not a bad way to start. We have the stalkers here now to apply pressure as well. This is the question of where Rain or have you been able to make enough in this game to kind of keep you in a good spot or not? It's uh, definitely an interesting question, but I think in general, reno has been okay. That Disrupt actually got quite a few Banes at the tail end. We do now have Adepts kind of attacking across the map as well, but Reynolds also breaking into the main base and natural of his opponent, so he's just having a fun time here, although he is getting blinked on top of. Can these units get cleaned up? Has to dodge from the Disruptor, which he does quite well. And now that Disruptor will be chased around. Max is going to tap GG. It's just going to be too much Zerg all over the place. You cannot control this, unfortunately. That's going to be that. And that is going to be a solid cleanup then at the end of the day. Alright, so Reno gets off to a pretty hot start. Not messing around in scenarios. It's so difficult to play against him, and yet here he was just absolutely no issue at all dealing with this very easily. As good luck, good luck is called, it is Ancient Sister. Jump on in. Next back starts in the upper right. Reynold will be in the lower left here for us.
Once again, you're going to block the initial expansion from going onto the natural location, and uh, just going to force that over to the other side, so kind of fairly expected, I suppose, in that regard. It's kind of exactly what you would expect to see, because that's what you see day in and day out from these guys. So no surprises there, at the very least. And the question of whether Max Max will try, try Adepts again. Now, that's a bit of a larger map, which means that it's going to be a little bit more difficult to really get across and really do something on this one. So, much more likely we perhaps see a game here which is going to be a little bit more focused on the... A little bit more focused, perhaps, on the... Um, Stargate. We'll see soon. Obviously, Cybercore finishing will give us a really good indicator of what is to happen here. coming back home and then we are going to be seeing the uh, warp gate starting so much more likely to not be a stargate and in fact be something a little bit different so i'm all ears for that i'm all interested in what exactly that's going to then be there's our adept just chrono boost along I'm just going to be seeing it is a stargate it's a stargate after warp gate so it's a little bit of a mind game because usually you don't go stargate after warp gate you go stargate before warp gate this does then delay the stargate and your question has to become well, is it worth delaying the Stargate like this? So, that's actually kind of an interesting kind of, you know, way to play, right? So, it is a little bit of trickery. Definitely, 100% is a little bit of trickery in here. But I kind of like it, you know? It's not so wild that it's like, you know... It, it just gets Reynold probably thinking, hey, I might have to defend against Adepts again. Especially when he was so quick to just dive on the Adept defense last time with the fast road drone and everything. So, anything you can do to suggest that this might be Adepts and then it not being Adepts... Typically should just be very good for you as max packs. I think that's actually a great way to, to respond and to set up based on what we've already seen. Let's see if it pans out for him though. Obviously no guarantees on that one just yet. I can say there's the fast roach roar though and there's just no need to have a roach roar in this quickly against a Stargate. So, so far I would say we're probably looking pretty good to potentially come and... Uh, Catch uh, Reno a little bit off guard. Just going to have that Oracle on the way. And yeah, these Ling's kind of keeping an eye out the front, but there's just nothing to really keep an eye out for at the moment. Hmm. There's going to be seeing a few devs trying to move on in. Some Ling's building. Now we're going to start building the Spore Crawlers. Where is the first Oracle coming across the map? I believe about halfway over right now. As these Adepts get a couple of drones already. This is already kind of similar to the first round of Adepts that the 6 gate got done previously as well. So keep that in mind. Let's just have our Ling's coming in. And 9, 10 drones already dead, man. This Oracle just getting to laser down a bunch because the Spore wasn't ready. There's not enough Queens in position. Double Oracle does serious damage, and Reynold takes big hits early on in this game. I think that little mind game truly has just worked absolute wonders here. I think it's really put you into a way better spot, honestly, than initially expected. It really feels like it comes down to that, so... Yeah, you play from Max Pax. Let's see if you can close out this game. Damage like this typically puts you in a position where you usually like to shout about, ah, you can't lose from here, and all of this and that, but obviously it is possible. Our lings going on a bit of a wander and just going to be coming one way and turn back across and go the other. Six additional gates from Max Pax means he is just going to commit off of this three base pretty heavily. He's going to go eight gates very early on and he's just going to go with uh, Blink and just commit. So hard Blink commitment right now. Really wants to get a lot done with this. A 
couple more drones going down as well. Reno bleeding out more units than he really would like to. Couple oracles sit down the bottom. It's going to be seeing Alings. I actually did grab a single adept, but obviously it's going to be the blink stalkers that are coming up. So a couple of adepts going down is just potentially removing some potential harassment. Not the biggest or craziest of things. I feel like a very manageable situation here as we get our blinking plus ones about halfway through for the moment as well. Just waiting on that. Stork is going to come pushing forward. Reno is on the counter attack as well. We've got one Adept that'll sneak into a mineral line. That's why it was nice to grab that other Adept. But it doesn't really stop this full on attack. The Lings across the map are going for a pylon. Must be in super battery up. The picture in picture showing you that story. Fourth base of Reno is going to fall. I just don't know how you were going to stop that. This wasn't even Blink as well. This was pushing pre-Blink. Obviously, as Blink comes in, these Stalkers are only going to get more powerful. So that's truly just going to be another issue here as... All of our lings go up the left side. Reno again aiming for the counterattacks. He needs max packs to really miss defend here. And if you can get max packs to defend incorrectly, then there might still be some hope for him again. But up until then, I think it's going to be very tough for him. Got some big question marks right now as to what is going to happen. Lots of stalkers coming around. Reno trying to get his way to a lurker den. I like it because if you get to lurkers, this army of the Protoss is typically not very good against them. So Reno just has to kind of gamble a little bit. He's behind. He's been behind all game. By gambling to get to lurkers, he put himself in a fantastic spot. Cross of Val takes down his stasis ward. That's a big star. Just going to see our stalkers running up into this base. Double cross of Bows and the force fields coming through. We have to back it up a little bit as well. So... Different bits and pieces just going on here. Now, uh, Ling's actually going to continue chasing somehow. Getting only a single Ling corner stasis. They're getting a lot of Stalkers here as they didn't have the Blink to get away. So the Ling's shred. Much better fight from Reynold. Catches a few more units. He's even going to get oh, nearly one or two that we're recalling. The Zealots don't do anything on the left side without charge just yet either. So they are not going to find success. Wow, what a uh, couple of moments. Uh, it is going to be pretty good for Reynold at the, uh, you know, all said and done after that. Turned into a pretty good situation for him as Hydra's lurker range, etc. coming up. We continue to build up our numbers here. And we're seeing these lings coming for a wrap around. Roach Ravager is going to get uh, trying to get onto the top of this as well. And so far, still, Reno pulling out some good defenses from what has been a very tricky position. Yeah, doing a very good job of this, I have to say. I'm, uh, I'm impressed so far, man. I'm impressed by Reino because, like, he's, he's really been just in a tough spot from pretty much the very start. He's been trying to drag this one back, and... Yeah, it's, it's just not been easy, but... It's kind of making it a thing. Keeping himself going as best he can. Ling's gonna catch Zelton and Archon up here. It's honestly not a bad fight for Reino again. As he will be able to clean that up. Over here, the Lurkers are now out. And this was the big question mark. Because I said if you can get to Lurkers, this is going to be very good against this army. Just getting there was a bit of a gamble. And he rolled the dice. And the dice landed up with sixes, apparently. Because now, he's got Lurkers defensively. His Lings are doing well in the counter-offensive. Going to cancel up a base. In fact, Reyno's going to bring the offensive across the map. Max Pax, by the way, has 94 probes. So Max Pax's actual army size is pretty small. He's meant to be playing this super trading out heavy army, right? Where you just trade out units again and again. That's going to be way more difficult with Lurkers. Because the Lurkers are going to be that much better at creating fights compared to the rest of the Zerg army. This was a bit tough for Reno. He lost a few of the Lings top left. And the Lurkers caught in stasis means he can't get all of them in position over here right now. And there's no anti-air. So the Oracle can't rise and is going to become an issue. And that's going to be one of the big problems. There's a lot of probes long distance mining though are going down. Reno able to shred through. A lot of these probes are still coming over. Finally some Zealots. 
But Raynor has had a couple of his lurkers killed. And again, he doesn't have a way to shoot down the oracles just yet. That's going to be an issue because it means he can't protect the lurkers. He can't get aggressive. But maybe he can still stay in the game defensively. A lot of those workers he's killed has brought Maxwax's worker count down to just 80 now. Which is obviously kind of wild. There's some more Lings go up this side. A couple of Archons coming through. Extra Zealots warping in. Our Lings still trying to wrap around there. As a couple of Archons will turn them back all the other way. Everything just settling for a few moments now as... We have a little bit of calm before any further storm. And what a matchup here. As Arenal desperately tries to hang on in. Again, a 2-0, if you're not familiar with the World Team League format, the 2-0 means that the 2-0 in player stays on. 1-1 one, one means that both players lose a life for their team and that both players must be replaced going forward. So this is the chance for Arenal to obviously play against another team player of Sidestorm, which is very likely he can go 1-1 one, one against at the very least. And then really put him into a great position as he wins this fight on the right side very comfortably. Get rid of the Archon as well, chasing the Stalkers back. Still a bit worried, his army is obviously just kind of look at Hydra Focus. It's not the greatest if the Prost player ever does tech up any further, but Max Pax hasn't been showing signs of that. Max Pax is not been going into the carriers and the, you know, just the Stargates, etc. That I think really could maybe bolster this up to something even better. Like, if you had carriers coming out against this, I think I'm terrified for Raynor. Obviously, that's just not the case here. Now Zealot's just going to come through, just going to be seeing a couple of Biles missing those Archons. Only barely though, but I mean, enough, enough support to really push this back. Lurkers here too, Max Pax needs to defend this position. Raynor's split on the other side of the map as well as the Lurkers finally burrow. They're going to start doing some mega damage here. These Archons will just not hold the line. Super Battery won't hold the line either. Oh god, the stream gives me heart attacks every time it blacks out for a second. Now this position has just not been defended well enough. In fact, I think Max Pax had an overwhelming army on the south, but he just couldn't find a way into those Lurkers. And that's the issue. He has no amazing way to deal with Lurkers. And without dealing with these Lurkers, every one of these fights is going to be tough for him. And that's what's allowing Raynor to split up so effectively. Here come the Oracles, Zealots and Stalkers from the other side. But now on the picture in picture, you see the rest of Raynor's army. As he gets wiped up to the top, he is at least winning out to the bottom right. It's a big fight for Max Pax on the top side. He at least cleans up a major part of what Raynor had. And now he's on the counter offensive. Max Pax realizing here that he has to go. He just killed a lot of units. And this is his opportunity to take advantage of that. It's a lot of Stalkers though and those stalkers do not necessarily do super well against lings i'd love to see a few more support units here as these lurks are going to continue their offense over on the other side but the oracles are there maybe low on energy but the moment they get some energy those lurkers are in trouble once more and reno says i'll respect that he's going to pull his army back get maxed out a supply blocked max packs on four bases against a reno coming up to six they're still not in the best of positions. Reynold just needs to make sure he doesn't take too bad of a fight, and he's doing just that by repositioning, taking fights at the best possible times. Now we do have the Oracles once again, laying waste to a lot of units here. The Hydras coming in. The Stalkers trying to blink away. They do not make it across the rocks. The vast majority of them going to get stuck here as they try to blink, but the Hydras will get rid of them, and that means the Stalkers have to just go down, and suddenly Reynold in a good supply lead, one we've not really seen in this game for a little while. It's been pretty close throughout. Now Raynor leads by about 40 as he comes up this ramp, looking to deny this base again. The Lurkers position themselves to stop this army from being able to get in position. The Oracles are drained of energy. They will not provide a lifeline here for Max Pax. He's going to rely on these Archons to come on forward. They're choking each other up, but they are getting through the Lurkers as the Hydras will do what they can. Lings give up their lives to try and hold this front line. Extra Lurkers, extra Hydras, and Raynor will hold on top of Max Pax's base. A small counterattack on the other side. But that will likely not be enough as Max Pax needs to break this position. And that is still looking difficult. Here he goes. All or nothing for Max Pax. And he is going to wrap around. He is going to clean out the Lurkers. And Raynor's supply is plummeting. He defends his base, Raynor. But he lost out on the top. His army getting reset. His Lurker count completely shut down. That is huge as Raynor... Back up the right to counterattack, and he slips in! The Zealot was in position! The reblock comes in! Oh, absolutely crazy. Wow, okay, that was actually a little bit ridiculous. Well, that was absolutely insane sequence of events, back and forth between the two of them. Now back to the top side, Max Pax is going to lose this base. Well, he barely has mining on it, but losing the Archon here might be the more expensive part. Every single unit counts right now. Raynor getting new lurkers up. Defensively, I don't know if there's going to be enough for Max Pax to break into a defensive position of Raynor. I feel like that's going to be very tough to do. As our lings come back over the left-hand side, our lurkers 
Might be able to finish up a hatch on the left. Yeah, that's going to die. And that's okay, though, because Reynor saved the hatchery in the forward center position and, like, on the bottom right a little bit just before. If he'd lost that hatch to the Zealots, then losing this left side base is a lot more problematic. Now it's a lot more manageable because you still have a base to mine from. You can see Max Pack's rotating around. Reynor not with a lot of creep spread to really work with here. Another link counterattack that gets shut down. Max Pack's on his last legs, guys. 49 workers, three bases, the ones that have been mining all game long, so they are pretty much drained. Uh-oh. Reno, you can't let Max Pax walk into your natural. Lurkers are obviously meant to be kind of defensive units, not units that kind of run into the fight. Can they deal with these Archons? The Lings are trying to buy time for the Lurkers to deal damage. All the Oracles are pretty much gone, which means the Oracles won't win this fight for Max Pax. And I think Reno is making a hold here, is he? It's really close. The last few Immortals are doing a lot of work. Reno has 24 Lings and 9 Hydras. There's not a lot to deal with Lings right now. Only a single Archon. Another one morphing in. And we're going to morph... Morph in two more High Templar because Max Pax recognizes that's pretty much all he needs to deal with Lings, but it's just not going to be enough. Raynor wins a ridiculous game of StarCraft 2 in ZVP against Max Pax. It's a massive 2-0 for Kaizy.